You're with the Urban Sports Scene back at the Norfolk Scope Arena, coming to you from the 2024 MEAC Tournament, Ray and Wole. And we just had our first upset of the tournament. Yeah. The quarterfinals completed today. Delaware State, who was swept by South Carolina State in the regular season, mm -hmm. pulled the upset and is advancing to play North Carolina Central, who eliminated our alma mater, the University of Maryland Eastern Shore, unfortunately yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Although another well-played game. It's been a fun tournament so far, folks. Wole, what have your thoughts been so far, and what do you think about Dale State's performance today? I thought this, the tournament so far has been great. It's been amazing. Uh, initially, it just seemed like, you know, status quo, like the favorites are winning, right? Um, so we, we didn't get as many shockers as we thought we were going to get. Uh, but at, all in all, I think you have quality basketball play. I was very impressed with Howard today, uh, what they did today in terms of playing a tough Morgan State team. But it seemed like they imposed their will and had a, a solid victory. And then in terms of Dell State, I thought Dell State in that first half, it was shaky, right? Uh, their star player, Martez Robinson, his two early fouls, he had two early fouls now is now in foul trouble. Um, then they had to kind of maintain maintain the flow. They were down nine at, ha at halftime. But in the second half, like they shut down South Carolina State to a point where they didn't score to the 13-minute mark. And just and that was all towards uh, uh, Tarvez, who like took over in terms of defensively for this for that ball club. So, to me, just to see these kids, the excitement, just to know they're playing the tournament. It's win or go home. That excitement, that energy, I'm loving it. So let's do a quick recap on both the men's and women's side. Mm -hmm. First, we had Norfolk State on the women's side. They defeated South Carolina State <laughs> yeah. in the opening game, where yeah. that wasn't a surprise. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if they impressed you or not. I know Diamond Johnson is the one that everybody yeah. came to see because she's the big transfer. Yeah. But she had a relatively quiet game. Kiara, uh, Mimi Wheeler, of course, yeah. for, Kiera, yeah. for mm -hmm. uh, Norfolk State, she looked good. Mm -hmm. Norfolk State was going to win that game regardless. Yeah. Um, I don't know, like I said, that was impressive for you. Um, but as a number one seed, they imposed their will like yeah. they were supposed to. Mm -hmm. And there was no surprise there, even with a semi-slow start. Yeah. We'll start with that matchup. What was your thoughts on that first game? To your point, I think it was sluggish and sloppy. Um, Coach Vickers talked about that, but he also said that, look, we were sloppy, but we scored, still scored. I think they scored 75, that, that 75 points. We still scored 75 points, and we were sloppy. So when you look at it that way, you kind of think, all right, well, you didn't play your best game, but you were still able to kind of have a, a lopsided victory, right? <laughs> um, but, yeah, was I did I expect better? Yes. I think in terms of what we – Typically, see out of North, we saw we were out of Norfolk State. <laughs> I expect a little better in terms of clean basketball play. Um, but in that matchup, they were Norfolk State. That's how I look at it. Like it wasn't anything. Like I didn't go out. I didn't go. I didn't come out. Come out of that game thinking like, oh, they just played phenomenal basketball. Like I came out looking at like, all right, you're a little sloppy. You got to clean that up because the next round is going to be a little tougher. So for those of you who are watching, let's give some context. The last time South Carolina State. Met Norfolk State in the regular season. Oh. South Carolina State lost by 62 points. So oh, you want to hear something even worse than that? Go ahead. <laughs> Average margin is still 60. <laughs> exactly. They lost both times. They lost by 61, 62. So exactly. It's still so 60. if Wolay's expectations <laughs> were a little low or a little high, I guess, for Norfolk State, that that was That's, the reason why. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so it's no real criticism. Norfolk yeah, State, we know who they are. Yeah. And of course, Coach Larry Vickers was here today. He was scouting because they're preparing for their matchup, which is coming up on tomorrow, as well as the first game tomorrow yeah. of, of that till. They face off against North Carolina Central. No, no, North Carolina Central plays Howard. Howard. Sorry. Uh, who does Norfolk State play? Norfolk State plays. The, oh, they play Coppin. Coppin. Coppin, so Coppin sorry, State. Coppin. Who, Coppin State, who, who of course not? eliminated <laughs> University of Maryland. So we'll get there. But the second, the second tilt on the women's side yeah. was Howard. They defeated Morgan State uh, in a, a well-played game, yeah. but it was a defensive battle, so it was low scoring. Mm -hmm. But that's right up Howard's wheelhouse because they play such great defense. Of course, they and have, which, mm -hmm. which we thought would have been a, the, the MEAC coach of the year. And should've Ty been. Gray should have been. Although we respect the coach Vickers because yeah. he had an amazing season. Mm -hmm. uh, only one conference loss. That was to Howard. But Howard beat Morgan State in a close battle, like I said, low scoring. What impressed you about the uh, the Bison? Uh, their defense. Um, I, th I thought that they played sol solid defense. And I'm always impressed with Coach Grace, um, in terms of like we talked about it, like losing your best player in um, in Destiny Howe, and then to be able to still be able to get to the semis, um, you're the second overall seed, and then and now you're able to get to the semis, semis. So I just I was just impressed with you know the way she coaches that team up, and to me, as as it was low scoring, but I felt like Howard always had a grip on the game. Did that make any that made any sense? I still think that. Morgan State were trying to make a couple of runs, but at the end of the day, Howard still had total control of that game. So Howard handled business. Mm -hmm. 
And then on the men's side, you had Merrill East and Shore. I already referenced that. Who played North Carolina Central and jumped out to a 16-6 lead. It yes. looked as though Merrill East and Shore was going to be the first team to pull off an upset here yeah, at the MEAC tournament. But uh, one of the best coaches in Lavelle Moten in North Carolina Central, he got his team prepared in the second half, mm -hmm. and that made all the difference because they looked like a different team. Fred Cleveland led, led that team in scoring. Sure. And many thought he should have been MEAC player of the year. Your thoughts on Central as they move on in this tournament? Uh, they're tough. Like, they're gritty. They've always been gritty. Um, Cleveland Jr. had 21 points in the game against the, against the uh, UMES. Uh, and then you had uh, King, who got hot in the second in the um, second half, who scored seven, 15, excuse me, mm -hmm. 15 in the second half. So, like, they have a dangerous team. Um, just because, one, you have a coach who's been there before, a coach who can, like, can coach in tournament time, and you know that you're always going to be in a fight when you're playing Central. And I feel like, you know, going into any – I don't, I don't think anybody, truth be told, wants to play Central. Because just because of the grit they have, but in terms of what they did against U University of Maryland Eastern Shore, they weren't, they didn't lose their composure. The sh uh, Eastern Shore, like you said, jumped out to a 16-6 lead, um, but they were still able to finish that half strong. And and, and uh, Central went up. The Eagles went up, uh, 40 to 37. So then following that up in the second half, where they never they never never lost the lead. So. Even though that game was competitive, they never lost the lead as soon as they got the lead in the um, after, after yeah after the half. They never lost the lead at all. Then there was Norfolk State who faced Coppin. Coppin came out ready to play, like every team has been in this tournament. Mm. And it looked as though Coppin could try to pull off an upset of the number one seed, Norfolk State men. Jamari Thomas, reigning MEAC player of the year, 2024 MEAC player of the year. He did not play his best game. He was pressing. He was excited. Nice press, and yeah. he was looking to, to make a splash, but I think he put too much pressure on himself. But Christian Ng stepped up in a big way. Check out Wole's article on that mm -hmm. on, on that game. Also, his interview on HBCU Corner mm -hmm. with Urban Sports. And again, you can check us out on any social media platform. Wole, Christian Ng, you talked to him after the game. You talked to Coach Jones. And they seemed pretty calm and cool after that yeah. opening round matchup against Coppin State. They were calm and cool. Uh, they weren't happy with the they weren't happy with the play. Uh, but Christian Ings, you know, he just loves basketball. He just didn't want to do it for his team as a leader. And that's just pretty much what he said, you know, I had to, like, step up. And even with Coach Jones saying it, you know, Christian doesn't really shoot threes. And he called him Philly, so I'm going to give him respect. He said, when he called you, he told me when I called him Christian, like, he don't, he didn't know who I was talking about. <laughs> so Philly, so Philly got hot. Right? Okay. And he said, Philly doesn't you normally make threes, but Philly can make threes. That's what, he, that's what he said. And you saw it. He was, like, four for six from three. And his three, especially that series where he hit one three, to cut it to four and another three with an and one to tie the ball game. From there, they went, they took off. So, yeah, to me, Christian Ings was definitely the hero for the game against uh, Coppin State. Now, in turn, like, in, but they still have to. For, so, in terms of that game, we just wiping that game away. They have to play a cleaner game the next round. You know what I mean? Like they have to. You know, they're they're going to play a tough Howard team that's game for. They're going to want uh, – both teams want retribution one, one way or the other. Howard wants retribution for what happened in the regular season, and Norfolk wants retribution for what happened in this very court last year. All right, quickly. So we mentioned Merritt Lee's to shore. Women, they lost to Coppin State in a well-played game, and now that propels Coppin State to face the top oh, seed in Norfolk impressive. State Spartans <laughs> on tomorrow at the MEAC tournament. And – I don't think anybody here is giving Coppin State a chance to upset Norfolk State. We're all expecting Norfolk State to face off against Howard on the women's side in that MEAC championship game, a rematch from last season. Uh, but, Wole, what's exciting you about tomorrow's slate of games? We just talked about how Delaware State pulled off upset today. They face North Carolina Central tomorrow. You have the rematch of the MEAC championship on the men's side and Norfolk State playing against Howard men. It's going to be a lot of good games. Me and you, we had – our sleepers, North Carolina Central, mm -hmm. as well as the the sleeper for you was Delaware State. Mm -hmm. They're play, they're facing off against each other, as I just said. We got a friendly wager going on. Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> in spite of that, what, what what are you excited about seeing tomorrow? In the women's side, actually, uh, I want to see um, Central versus Howard. I think that's going to be a, f a fun matchup. You know what I mean? I think that you have Central versus C Howard. In the Central, <laughs> in Central playing no, Howard. Central plays Delaware State. In the women's side? Oh, women's side. I said okay. women's side. I don't know what I said. In the women's side, Central versus Howard. That's what I said. Central versus <laughs> I think, I, I think you, have two, you have two good scorers out there in first Central. And then you have you have Howard, who to me is tenacious on defense. And they're like, to me, they're, they got they have the heart of the champion. And I feel like, you know, Central's had a had a interesting season this year. You know what I mean? In terms of losing their head coach. And this team has kind of played 
they play inspired basketball, to be honest with you. So I just think that that matchup is going to be intriguing. Um, and then also, in terms of a matchup, the match we have a wager on in the men's side, uh, Dell State versus um, uh, against Central. Uh, I just think that that's going to be what we saw here. We, we, what we saw here is we saw a Dell State team that didn't play their best game offensively. They didn't make a three in the first half at all. I think it was 0 for 9 in the first half. But they were able to maintain and then play, they strap up and play defense. I talked about Tavares. Tavares, after the game, said that I'm typically not known for my defense. But he knew that it was win or go home, and he played his best defensive game probably his whole life. So, so if you look at that, just knowing that you're going to have to bring that type of energy to play against the Central team because that's, that's, the, that's the energy the Central plays regardless. So I'm excited to see that type of game. Knowing what we saw here with the energy and also how Dell State's fans stayed here and then we're going to see how Central fans will be here, I think that like that game is going to be real lit. It's going to be an, it's going to be an inter entertaining game. So I would say that would be like a game that I'm excited to see. As we mentioned, we thought it was going to be – a lot of upsets. We thought it was going to be kind of this unpredictable, wild, crazy MEAC tournament. So far, it's not what we've expected. expected. However, it could change tomorrow with Delaware State and North Carolina Central on the men's side. Mm -hmm. And then on the women's side, we think we know what's going to happen. But remember this. Yeah. Howard was unfortunately swept. I say unfortunately as if that's my team, but it's not really my school. Y'all know that, right? Nothing, Bradley dude. destroys my school. <laughs> Howard was nothing. swept by North Carolina Central. They were swept by North Carolina Central during the regular season. Women? So, yeah. Okay. So, it's not – and in the last game at, at the at the Burr was mm. in overtime. Mm. So, it's not a shoe in it how it wins yeah, that game. Yeah. But if I'm being spoiled – as a as a MEAC fan, as a as a MEAC alum, mm -hmm. I think I would want to see North Carolina Central versus uh, Norfolk on the men's side, and mm -hmm. then Howard versus Norfolk on the women's side for the championships on Saturday. I think that creates the best environment, yeah. and it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. Um, but we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. That's why we're here to just observe and watch. We can make predictions, but you know, doesn't always mean it's going to go the way we want it. Yeah. Ole, you have any final thoughts that you want to share before we, we close out this, this quarter, corner final recap right. with, with the folks out here. For those who watched our MIAC uh, tournament preview show, uh, like I said, we weren't far off. We weren't. Uh, a lot, a lot, of, what, a lot of what we told you is kind of how it worked yeah, out. For college, uh, college, yeah. Except the, the fact that, like I said, wasn't a lot of upsets. Yeah. However, our sleepers are still in play. Yeah. And Norfolk is really good on both sides. So <laughs> I'm guessing one, two, hard to predict. Yeah, I don't know how much that, that, that tells you about us. But we'll let any, any final thoughts before and we And first off, I'm, I'm going to give a shout out to uh, the University of Morales to Shore. A men's basketball team. I thought they played. They played their tails off in oh, a loss. So everybody in a, did. In a lo and everybody did. But I'm being biased. <laughs> and, yesterday. And, and, and yesterday, I'm being biased. <laughs> you get, get my bias level. You got your shirt on. You're doing right. That's why. I want to give a shout out to Coach Coach Grafton. I thought his kids played with so much heart. Deontay Johnson played with so much heart. Um, to play with a, play with a dog like mentality. So shout outs to you know um, University of Maryland Eastern Shore. And I'm just really impressed with all these young kids and what they put out on the floor. Uh, within these uh, these two days, uh, I mean, it's easy as fans or critics to be critical of, of any basketball, any ho at basketball player, any hooper. But when you actually see these kids at the at the at the college level, the collegiate level, playing with heart, determination, desire, putting it all out there on the court, I'm just so proud of all these young men and women, to be honest with you, because they have done so so well. It is not easy to play with a bunch of people, students, parents, whoever, yelling at you, screaming at you. It is not easy. And I felt like a lot of you kids have excelled at the highest level. So that's my props to you all. Well, thanks for tuning in to the Urban Sports Scene. Continue to follow us, like I said, on every social media platform. Just search Urban Sports Scene. If you're on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Also, go to the home of the Urban Sports Scene, Empire Media at empiremedia.com. Again, we will have coverage of the MEAC tournament throughout the 2024 MEAC tournament. Right here at the Frigid, if you haven't heard, the North, Nova Scope Arena I'm is crazy. cold. But this is going to be the home of the MEAC tournament, at least until 2027. We, we just heard that news. But, again, we appreciate you for rocking with us, and we'll have coverage throughout, and we'll see you tomorrow.